G'day, Warbles on a lot here, and uh, this is my collection of El Cheapo Chinese Electric Rechargeable White Man's Boomerangs. The collection began in December 2007 with the $29.95 Crazy Prices Foam Styrene and Carbon Fibre Electric 2 Channel Infrared Controlled rechargeable helicopter. The two-bladed rotor has a stabiliser bar which is interestingly configured to have lifting ability. It has a genuine sideways facing tail rotor which gets a more or less fixed proportion of the current going to the main rotor which is driven by a reduction gear from the main engine. The onboard lithium polymer battery charges via a power cord from the infrared control unit. Main engine throttles on the left. Turn left, turn right stick basically interferes with the amount of current as a proportion that goes from the main engine to the tail rotor. It has a trim button so you can alter the central point there. And a cord comes out from a little hatch and you charge the helicopter's flight battery from the penlight batteries inside the controller. Indoors you give this thing enough power to get into the air and it lifts up and it would hover but it slightly nose down so it starts moving forward and it would go straight but because of the physics of gyroscopic precession and the geometry of the thing it hangs one skid low and it moves off turning in that direction. Once it gets some airspeed and it will eventually accelerate until it's flying forward as fast as the air is going down through the rotor. Once it gets some airspeed you can then use your tail rotor control to turn it left or right and you can fly figure eights and circuits inside the house. I think it's a gem. Six months later in the middle of 2008 for $100 in the home living shop, I purchased a coaxial three channel radio control helicopter. And it has two main engines driving the main rotors in different directions. Again, with a balance bar system, which means the top rotor turns slower than the bottom rotor, although the engines are delivering a balanced amount of torque. And therefore the top blades are not as stiff as the bottom blades and if you hit the ground too hard, like I did this morning, suffering from rotor decay, which is what happens when you descend too fast vertically through your own chopped up air, it finally destroyed its hub assembly. This is the little tail lift fan, so that after you balance the torque from the two engines and get it to hover pointing in one direction, then you use that fan to lift the nose and make it go backwards or lift the tail and make it go forwards and if you want to turn it then uh, vary the torque to turn it and it's got no gyroscope you have to fly this thing by hand if you want to see it flowing by hand in my videos on the scroll way back at the start or you can just search warbles on a lot radio or warbles on a lot rc helicopter flight test and it'll take you back to a takeoff figure eight and landing back on the pad and uh, I flew this thing for a total of 3 hours and 19 minutes. So with a $100 purchase price, it cost me $33.50 per hour to fly a three-channel, fairly realistic looking, very difficult to operate, radio control model helicopter. I'm able to speak with such authority about the cost and all the rest of it because being a slightly obsessive, compulsive mad scientist, I kept a logbook. So I know how many times I've charged the battery. I know the date and how long I charged the battery for. I know the date I discharged it. I know how long the thing was switched on, how long it was aloft, and what its total time is. I've also got a bit of a write-up on what learnings were made and what the cost of repairs were. And I did learn to repair and rebuild these plastic blades, I used two part automotive body bog and a skin of 
five minute epoxy, Araldite, because it's quite normal to get this thing descending slightly too fast. It descends into its own chopped up airflow, rotor decay sets in, and even at full power, it just comes straight down and it hits the ground and it busts the rotors. However, I got 20 recharges in three hours and 16 minutes over about a month and then I put it away in its box and left it there for three and a half years and I charged it up yesterday and I flew it this morning had about three minutes airborne and uh, there was just too much wind and it got blown away downwind and it um, you know, got into rotor decay and came to the ground crashed and busted its upper main rotor assembly I doubt it's ever going to fly again so for a purchase price of $100, if I'd crashed it and killed it in the first 10 seconds, it would have been $36,000 an hour, which is a pretty fast way to spend money. But the longer you fly it, the lower the hourly cost becomes until it finally only cost $33.50 an hour for 3 hours and 20 minutes, which is fairly cost efficient. And because we live in an amazing, decadent, techno-fascist, industrial, barbarian style of a market economy in the global village, whereas four years ago, $100 got you an almost unflyable helicopter that weighed a pound and had one square foot of rotor disc swept area, now in 2011 at Christmas time, $100 buys you a one kilogram helicopter with two and a half square feet of rotor area. And whereas the Apache had no onboard gyroscope and it was a complete pain to fly, this thing has got an onboard gyroscopic solid state autopilot. A little ring laser gyro on a chip. It's also got high and low speed gear for the tail rotor, which is again what you use for tilting the stabilized disc forward or backward and this thing will hold its magnetic heading with the gyro autopilot so I'm hoping to be able to concentrate on maintaining height and staying out of rotor decay because I don't know whether I'm going to be able to rebuild these blades if and when they mix and mesh and smash and crash but anyway that's the warbles on a lot El Cheapo Decadent Radio Control Electric Chinese White Man's Boomerang Collection. Yahoo! Yippee! Hurrah!